In this video, I'll teach you how to read the duration of a section inside an anim montage. There are many use cases for this feature. For instance, in this example, each time the character plays an animation, it changes its color. But as soon as the animation finishes, it returns to the original color. It might not be the best use case you can imagine, but if you're an Ultimate Character Project user, you know that each time you select an anim montage, you have to set its time or the section duration you want to play. However, with Ultimate Character Version 2, you don't need to set the duration. All you need to do is select the animation, set a section if you want to play a specific part, and optionally, you can change the play rate, and all the important events related to the ending of a section or animation will happen automatically. Before diving into the step-by-step -step creation of this feature, let me give you an overview. First, I validated the montage and cached the animation class into a variable. Then, I played the montage and cached its duration into a variable. We need to check if a section is requested. If it is, we read the section's end time on the timeline. Next, we move the montage timeline indicator to the section's starting point on the timeline. By subtracting the beginning time from the end time, we can get the section's duration. Now, inside the get section end time function, the first step is to validate all variables. If the section isn't valid, I'll use the first section of the montage and update the section variable. Then I move the timeline indicator to the end of the section to read its end time value. Now, let's implement this function step by step so you can learn how to use it in your projects. For this tutorial, I use the third person sample project and I'll add the function to the third person character class. First, let's create a new function to play animations. Our goal is to return the duration of the animation we play. To play an animation, we need some inputs, so let's add them. The first input is the anim montage. The second input is the section we want to play. And the third input, optionally, is the play rate. And make sure to set the default value for the play rate to 1. Our inputs are ready, but for safety, let's make sure the montage is valid. Instead of drawing wires from input, I use the variable node, right-click on the node, and convert it to a validation check. If the montage is not valid, we're done with this function, and we can return 0. Next, we need the animation instance that drives the mesh, so let's get that. We'll cache this in a variable for later use. And ensure it's valid. If it's not valid, we'll cancel the rest of the function. Now, we can play the montage in the animation class. Let's provide the required variables for this function. First, we need to connect the montage. And we also need to connect the play rate. Change the return type to the duration so we can get the entire montage duration with the play rate applied. I'll cache this duration for later use. At the recording time, I forgot to make the duration value positive in case the animation is playing in reverse, so you need to add an absolute node here before caching the duration. We can add a safety check here. If the montage fails for any reason, the duration will be zero, and we don't need to continue the function. Just a quick reminder, this section node is the same as the input section of the function. If the section is not set, we can return the cached montage duration. Before this function gets more complicated, let's create another function. 
In this new function, I want to get the end time of the section as output. As inputs, we need the animation class, the montage, and the section. Change this variable type to the anime instance object. For the montage type, we obviously must set it to the anime montage object. Last but not least, section type is just a name. It's good practice to always check and validate the inputs of a function. For the anim instance and the montage, we can just use a regular validation check. To validate the section, we can use is valid section name function on the montage. If the section is valid, everything is good. Otherwise, I want to use the first section of the montage. We could validate the section in the early steps before even playing the montage and fail the function, but I plan to use the first section. I want to store this first section name in the section variable we already have, so we can use it inside the main play animation function. To be able to write data on this variable, open the section variable and enable pass by reference. As you can see, the icon of the input has changed. Now, to write on this variable, we have to use the setByRef function. This way, we have access to the first section name inside the main function too. To get the end time of the section, we need to move the timeline indicator to the end of that section. Inside the animation class, there's a function called montage jump to section's end. Provide the section name and the montage to this function. Now, on the animation class by calling montage get position, we can read the timeline indicator position, which is the time variable that we are here for. We reached our goal for this function, so let's return the value. Before continuing to the last step, let me describe what we've made so far in this function. This is the montage I created to play those fighting animations you saw at the beginning of the video. As you can see, it has three different sections. When you call this function, it's like moving the timeline indicator to the end of the section. And I use this function to read the time that indicator is on. The process is the same. If you ask for other sections, it moves the indicator to the end of the section and reads its time. Back to the main function, we can make our work easier by calling this function without connecting wires. To do that, you need to enable pure. Also, as an optimization, since we don't write to any other data outside of this function scope, we can convert it to const. Let's cache this variable into a meaningful name like section end time. And make sure to provide all the inputs. We previously moved the timeline indicator to the end of the section, so we need to move it back to the beginning of the section by calling the montage jump to section function. Now, we can read the current position of the indicator. We have the end time and start time. With just a simple math, we can calculate duration by subtracting the start time from the end time, and the result is the duration of the section. As a reminder, we had a variable for the play rate, 
and we need to apply that manually to the duration we calculated. All you need to do is divide the duration by the play rate. It also handles the negative play rates for reversed animations. We have achieved our goal of determining the section duration. Now, for the final step, let's retrieve the calculated value. This is the end of the video. I hope you learned something useful. Please subscribe to the channel and continue watching my videos to help grow my channel and motivate me to create more videos.